So welcome back all of you, Nana here, and then uh, we are into the next day's program on uh, fusion inventory and fusion shipping implementation. And then uh, you can write to me for any clarifications at nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. So today we are going to see the toughest topic of this uh, course, which is the uh, units of measures. You may feel that what happens, uh, what is uh, here, uh, that is big thing on the units of measures, fine. Many will be asking this question, but it is not so, it's actually really tough actually, fine. You have to conceptualize it very clearly actually. And then if you don't do it, it will not work properly. And then uh, what happens, we'll not go and then begin this uh, topic as such. So this topic is the toughest topic of inventory actually. Now go there and see this one. <clears throat> So let me go there. Now, uh, we will open up what happens here, fusion inventory. So there, we'll go there. And then in this one, I will uh, go to the EBS documentation. I go to the inventory, and then I go to the day five. And then here, you will see the units of measures. Oh, it is not there in day five actually. If I go back, you can see day four is there or not. Unit separates. Yes, we have a document on inventory day four now. So double click on it and open it up. <clears throat> it has got three levels of uh, what happens uh, difficulties actually, fine, or complications you can say, levels you can say. Fine. So we are now into the first level. Fine. Level one, we are going to go on and see. Uh, and uh, what happens if you go and then see on the EBS now? And go there. If you have a look at this setup, units of measures and then go to the classes. So in this place, what happens if you go on and see? When you open up your production instance, what happens? All these things are coming as a seeded one. Area is a class. And CAT is a count is a class. CPU is a class. Fine. All these things are coming as a seeded one. Whereas in Fusion, what happens? It will be blank actually. Fine. There will not be anything at all. You won't be finding anything at all. So if you say height is a class and then all these things. A yeah, class is nothing but a collection of relevant units of measures. Please, what happens, all of you, please take notes as and when I do it now, I go there. So because all of my, I will be talking so many, and then what happens, when you, when you take notes, it will be very handy for you, actually. So let's say, for example, length is a unit of measures. Length is a class. And then what happens, since it is an American system, the foot is the base unit, and then what happens, it has got a three-letter alphanumeric code also. A maximum of three-letter alphanumeric code. But here, what happens, they have put AFT, no, and maximum of three. And then uh, they found that what happens uh, this uh, uh, UAM code is a meaningless one and so what happens it has been removed in Fusion actually. So we don't have any code as such now. The three letter code is no more available in Fusion actually. It is available only in EBS now. I go there. And then if you click on the uh, on the length, what happens if you click on the units of measures, you can now see all the relevant units of measures of length will be coming up here. The centimeter, the foot, the inch, the kilometer, meter, <laughs> everything is now coming up here. So a class is nothing but a relevant units of measures now. And out of which, what happens? One of them will be made as a base now. Right? There is no foot is a base. So there is a base units of measures. So to which, what happens? You will not relate everything. So foot is a base units of measures. Fine, go there. So length is a class, and then it has got all the things which are related to length actually. And then they click on the units of measures, and then you can now see what happens. Everything is related to uh, length. Everything is coming. Out of which, foot is a base units of measures. And then what happens? You go to the conversions, and then what happens? There are three types of conversions are there. One is the standard conversions, one is the intra-class conversion, one is the inter-class conversion. So in the standard conversion, what happens is one foot, fine. One foot is equal to one foot only, as far as foot is concerned. One inch is equal to what happens, 0.08 is 333 foot. One kilometer is equal to what happens, 3,281 foot. So likewise, what happens, each and everything has been given this. One yard is equal to what happens, three foot. So likewise, what happens, everything will be related to foot actually. So each and every units of measures will be related to the base unit actually. So we can relate only to the base unit. Right? You cannot relate to any other thing. So there is no direct relationship between what happens, the centimeter and then the foot. Or centimeter and then kilometer. So centimeter and kilometer, there is no direct relationship. Everything is rooted via base unit. Is it clear enough? Right? So a class is a collection of relevant units of measures. And then every class will be having one base unit. And then every other units of measures will be related to that one. Okay, fine. Go there. So let us see a complication, how it is going to come. Fine. Level one complication we are going to see now. So let's say the customer is now going to create two such powders. Now. Fine. Powder one and then powder two. And then the powder two is a dense powder when compared to powder one. And then he is now having his own weight class. Fine. He is having a weight class. In which what happens, he has got a grams. And then he has got a sachet. In a sachet, what happens, he is going to pack. And, then, and he is considering this as a primary unit of measures. The primary and then the base may be same, may be different also. So I'm not going to make grams as my base units of measures for this, uh, what happens, weight class. 
and then what happens i will know make grams of the weight loss and then what happens i will create an item what happens is the primary so i am now purposely making what happens a primary units of measures different from the base units of measures it may be same it may be different and then here what happens i am not going to make it different so the primary units of measures is nothing but a stock keeping units of measures so the stock is now kept in these units of measures now so this is known as a primary units of measures <clears throat> Clear on some point, brother. So this is how it works. So is a stock keeping unit of measures. The primary unit of measures is nothing but a stock keeping unit of measures. So the stock will be reported only on the primary. But what happens? The conversions will not take to the base only. Any, any doubts on this now? <clears throat> so I am not going to get a class. And then I'll be having three units of measures. Out of which, what happens? One of them, the gram, is going to be the base. When I create an item, what happens? The item will be having this as a primary. <clears throat> Got it. <clears throat> So this is how it works now. Fine, go there. So and then why we go further now? And then here, what happens in a sachet? I can put ten grams now. <clears throat> in a sachet. What happens? We can put ten grams. Whereas in a packet, we can put twenty grams. In a packet, we can put twenty grams. And then powder two is dense now. When powder two is considered, what happens? A sachet is a small one. What happens? Whether you pack powder one or powder two, we can only put ten grams. Whereas in a packet, what happens? It can, it has got an exception. In a packet, we can put thirty grams if it is going to be powder. So powder two is a dense one. Powder two is a dense one. And then when you pack in the packet, what happens? We can even have what happens? Thirty grams. This is called item specific exception. It is called an item specific exception. And then this is also known as the intra class exception. Intra class exception. Right. So let us now start to do this. Right. So as and when it goes on, what happens? It will be very complex. And so what happens? Any doubts at any point in time? You just open up your mind and ask. No, fine, go there. So let me create my weight class. Fine, go there. So I will now go there and then log in, and then let me create a weight class. <clears throat> go there. It's P fifty. <clears throat> so I'm logging in with my login now. So once the login, what happens? I go inside now. <clears throat> I will now go there. Click on the setup and made a miss. I will now go to manage unit service, manage percentage, unit percentage, MEAS percentage. So you go there, manage units of measures here, and go there. Let me create my class. So navigation, fine, go there. So here, what happens? I will now go to manage UAM classes. If I directly go to the classes, I click on the class, manage UAM classes, and then click on plus. I'm going to get it. Click on plus. Now. I'm not going to get a weight class. Now. Right. The class name is what? P50 underscore weight. I'm not going to get it. So I will not put what happens. I will not put the weight class now. Weight class. And then I will now make one of them as a base unit. So in this case, what happens? I'm not going to make grams as the base unit. Right. Grams as the base unit. I'll go there. So I will not say P50 underscore grams. I will not give the description also. I'm take a copy of it. And put the descriptions. So I'll put G as a capital one so that it can be easily understood. And then if you want, you can put it. And then in EBIS, what happens if you go on and see when you are creating a class, we have to make one of them as a base unit. Along with that, what happens? We had to give a three-letter alphanumeric code. And the three-letter alphanumeric code has been done away with in Fusion now. And there's no more there. So there is no three-letter unit submission code actually. You have to have only the unit submissions. I click on it. So I have now created a class with one of them as a base unit. Any doubts? Good. So nobody has got any doubts. So I'll now give a save and close. I click on save and close by which what happens? The class is now created. So wait class with what happens? Your base unit is now ready. I click on save and close. It's not done. Now, if you want to query it, what happens? If you go and then put the UP50, and then what happens? You go to the manage unit. Sorry, I'm sorry. You go to the manage unit units of measures, and then if you put P50, it won't be coming at all. P50, and then if you make a search, it will not come. So what they have done is here itself. Here only what happens? We have to have the percentage. You know, right? The percentage has been introduced. Over, you know, nowhere the percentage works. Here it works. It works here. All idiotic way. Right? They should have given uniformly everywhere. You know, right? The percentage doesn't work everywhere. Right? Uh, it considers as a like only. P50 is a like, but here only the percentage works. Actually. Thank you, sir. Now what I'm going to do is I'll now go there. I will not keep on save and close now. Fine, but it's not completed. I go there. Now uh, I will now create what happens your units of measures for this. And I'm going to get the units of measures for this. 
can go there. So I'm not going to create the units of measures for this P50 weight class. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to have is what? I will not create what? The <coughs> sachet as well as the packet also. Fine. I will not create sachet and packet and go there. So let us now create the base. I'm in the units of measures area. Fine, click on plus now. So let me create the sachet as well as the packet. And units of measures is what? P50 underscore S-E-A-C-H-E sachet. I'm going to take a copy of it and then put it in the description. Now. And then here, class is what? P50 and then give a tab. So we have only one big class that will be coming. And, go there. and then don't use any name. This is the first one. And then click on plus now. Let me get the packet also. Click on it. And then I'm going to get the packet also. And P50 underscore packet. I'm putting in this packet now. <clears throat> go there. So I'm not creating a packet. And go there. Click on the description. And then I will now put P50 and then give a tab now. By which what happens, we are now completed creation of two more units of measures in which what happens is everything it now shows what it is the grams is the base basically. Any doubts on this? So Nana, what is the uh, this reciprocal description and plural description? Uh, reciprocal description, plural is I don't know what exactly is. You can even give some extra description. I think probably <laughs> this is a new one uh, when compared to Yibis basically. I don't know what exactly it is. No worries. Thank you. Yeah, you, you try over it, fine. I think it will be only for description, basically. Fine. Some might have been added. You refer the what happens to your uh, uh, implementation guide, probably you'll be able to get some information on this. So click on save and close now, fine. Go there. So by which what happens, you know, completed the three units of measures which are required for this. <coughs> save and close. So I will go there. Click on it. So we are completed now. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to say what, I'm not going to give the relationship now. Fine. Now, one sachet can have 10 grams and then one packet can 20 grams. So this is what is a standard conversion. So let us now go there and then give the standard conversion for this one. So here, what happens? You go there and then go to the manage UM standard conversion. So you click on this button, manage units of measures standard conversion. Click on it now. We are going to go there and then click on it. Now. Click on plus now. So let me do it now. <clears throat> and then the units of measures is what? P50. And then if you give a tab, it will show the units of measures now. I will now choose the sachet. And click on OK. Everything gets related to the base unit. So one sachet is equal to 10 grams. I'm putting it as 10 grams. Fine. You give a plus now, fine. Go there. I will not go there. Go, there. go to the next one now, fine. Go there. P50. And then give a tab now. And then I will open the packet over here now. And go to the packet. And then one packet is equal to 20 grams. And remember, we don't have any relationship between sachet and packets. Sachet and packets are not mutually related. Everything is related via base only. Fine. It is all related via base. And go there. So click on save and close. Any doubts on the conversion standard conversion? Stop. So we have completed the standard conversion. So whatever you create as a unit sub measures, what happens? You have to relate to the base basically. So yeah. none of the UM is based on the base UM and class, right? Of course. That, that conversion. Yeah, exactly. So that, that combination. Yeah, it's a combination, we can say. Fine. Okay. Class and then the base UM. Every unit sub measures will be related to its base only. And there is no relationship between sachet and packet. Got it. <clears throat> So click on save and close by which what happens we are now completed that base we are completed that standard unit submitters conversion now comes the complexity so level one complexity we are going to work upon fine there are three levels of complexities the first level level one so here what they say is in a sachet even see powder is one and then what happens the powder and powder two powder one and powder two are two items and then this is a less dense powder is a more dense powder actually this is a more dense powder and then when you transact powder two on a sachet, what happens is they can pack only 10 grams. They say it's a very small one. And so what happens, sachet can only have 10 grams. But packet is being a bigger one. What happens is for 20 grams, we can pack 30 grams if I'm packing powder two. So we are going to simulate this now. So let us first of all create the item now. So these are all item specific exceptions. These are all called intra-class item specific exception. Please take a note of it now. Fine. It is called intra-class item specific exception. So let me go on the create item now. Fine. Let me get both items. The no more than the items. Click on plus now. We'll now go for one more tab region. And then here, what happens? We'll now go to the home icon. <coughs> I click on the home icon and then go to the product management and then go to the product information management. And which what happens? I'm not going to get it. And go to the product management and then click on the product information management and then let me create the item. I'm not going to create two items powder one and powder two. <coughs> so we go there, click on this icon now. So click on this task carousel and then click on the create item. I'm not going to create an item. So we are creating the item. And then here what happens? We can create the item only on the master org now. Fine. P T and then zero. Only on the master org we can have only the master org we can create. The class is a root item class now. 
So this comes when all the setups are not done properly, otherwise it will not come at all. Fine, go there. We have already made this template as a default template, fine, click on OK now. So once when you give it, what happens again? Now see this item coming up now. And remember, uh, we have now made our uh, user item type as what? Our own item type, fine, that is coming up automatically because it has been populated on the template actually. We'll now put the item over here now, fine, POT underscore, that one's a powder. <coughs> Powder one. So PVD water one and I will not say is a less dense powder. Less dense powder. So I, I'm not going to make a change of the what happens unit structure that's not fine. From here, what happens? I'll not make it as part P50 and then give a tab now. <coughs> I'm not going to make a change. So on P50, what happens? We got three things, and then what happens? I'm going to make what sachet as a primary unit of measures now. The primary units of measures is the stock keeping units of measures. Fine. Stocks will be reported only on sachet and no other one. The primary units of address. So sachet is the primary units of address. So stock will be reported only on the primary units of address. So here I'm leaving it as a primary, primary, both men, as well as. And then I'm not making any other modification to the attributes of mine. So okay. If I click on the association, then let me associate with the child. I will now go to the actions and then go to the select net. Let me put the third organization over here now. It's P53. Uh, so the third organization I'm going to associate now. Select it and then click on apply. And then click on done. By which what happens if you associate with the third org. And by which what happens? The less dense powder is now created. Now. If I go there, it's not and then now associate with the child off and go there. Click on save and close. So let me create the second out item also. Powder two is a what I'm as a more dense powder actually. And go there. So click on the task carousel and then click on the create item. And then I'm going to get the next item. <coughs> item is what? Is a P50 zero. Go there. It's a root item class. Now. And then the template comes over here. Okay. And then let me pop it that over here. It's P50 underscore powder. Two. It is a more dense powder. More dense powder. And then here, what happens? I will again make a change to what? Your sachet. No? Fine. So both of them are having a primary unit of measures as sachet. No? Okay, no? And that's it. We go to the association and associate to the child third arm. Go to the actions and then click on select net by which what happens. I'm going to associate with the third org. So P50 and then three and then entry now <coughs> is coming up now. Go there, select and then click on apply and then click on done now. So by which it's not done. <coughs> Any doubts on this item creation <coughs> with what happens? You are sachet. You are, if you go to this, go to the overview now and the overview screen, you can now see this now. What happens is the sachet as the primary unit of measures, which is a stock keeping unit. They also call it the SKU. The SKU for the item is what sachet? Stock keeping unit. And go there, click on it and then save and close. Now, let us now go there, go to the units of measures, and then what happens? We don't go and then wait. And then here, go to the setup and maintenance. <coughs> no, sir. And now click on this navigation. And then go to the setup and maintenance, and then go to the manage units of measures now. <coughs> so the task name is what? Manage percentage, unit percentage, fine. MEA percentage, and then Manage units of measures, and go there. Click on it. And then here, what happens? I'm now going to provide the intra class conversion now. Find the first intra class conversion. The intra class conversion is nothing but item specific conversion. That is the second conversion. There are three conversions are there. One is the standard conversion, one is the intra class, one is the inter class. So we are not going to do that. So I'm not going to mention the intra class conversion. So let me go on and do that. You go to the actions, and then here what happens? You go to the manage standard conversion is already completed. We go to the intra class conversion. In the on the unit of measures area, fine, go there. You go to the actions and then go to the what? Manage UM intra class conversion. So you're going over there. Fine. What is the organization P? Uh, it's all org specific actually. Fine. Go there and then put the org. The third org I'm putting it now. Fine. Go there. So for which what happens? I will do. So click on plus now. Fine. I'm going to make it now. I click on plus now. I'm going to make the intra class conversion for this now. Intra class conversions are item specific. Now. Fine. Click on plus now. Fine. Let me put the item first as such. And remember, only for the second item we are having a problem now. Fine. Go there. P50 and then give a tab now. So I will now choose the second item over here. Powder 2, I'm going to choose now. So there are plenty of things that are coming now. now <clears throat> to the powder two. Where is the TR? Otherwise, cancel it and then we'll say underscore. Sorry, underscore PO and then give it happen. I will choose the powder two. From the powder two, I'm choosing it. <clears throat> so I'm choosing it powder two. Only for the powder two, we are having an exception. Powder one is not having an exception. From units of measures, from 50, P50, and then give it happen. Only on a packet we are having it. Not on the sachet, we don't have any exception at all. Only on a packet we are having an exception. Fine, click on OK now. 
This is a simulated exercise. In reality, what happens? It may even be more complex. Remember, I know that in reality, it may be even more complex. I know that. So it automatically shows you the standard conversion. The standard conversion is 20 is not showing you. Fine. One packet can accommodate 20 grams. Now, what I say is, since the powder is there, the company says that what we can very well pack 30 grams. So this is applicable only for powder two item and not for powder one item or any other item as such. Go there. I will not make a change from 20 to 30. And then remember, you should not make a change once when the transactions have started. No? Otherwise, what happens? It will not throw some error actually. And over. So there will be a, a severe database corruption actually that will be happening. And so what happens? You are not. You are supposed to make all these exceptions before the transaction starts on the inventory. So go there. So powder two. And then what happens? It is a one packet can have thirty grams only for powder two. So this is an intra-class item specific exceptions. Is it clear now? Click on save and close my baby for I can not specify this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make a transaction. So I'm now going to make a 10 packet transaction on the double. So when I make a 10, 10 packet transaction, what happens? It is now it has to report to what? It has to report in Sashi actually. When I'm now making in packets, now. transaction is in packets. And then since the primary unit submitter is Sashi, so there is no relationship between packet and Sashi directly. There is no relationship between packet and Sashi. So what the system will do is it will now convert the packet into grams. And then grams into sashes because packet is now related to gra uh, grams. Sachet is also related to grams. So what happens? The system will now do two conversions. So first of all, what happens? The packet will be converted to grams, and then the grams will be converted to sachets. So it will not do two conversions because there is no direct relationship. So when I make ten packets, what happens? It is normally two hundred grams because of twenty, but for item two, it will be three hundred grams, and then three hundred grams will be thirty sachets actually. It will be showing us thirty sachets. So we are not going to do this now. Fine, you know, make a transaction of this now. Fine, go then see this. One. So let us now perform the transaction of this. One. So we will go there, and then what happens? No, what happens? It will save and close. Same, 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 come on, wait for us. And we will now go there, and then perform the transaction. Click on the home icon, and then you go to the warehouse operations, then go to the inventory, and then perform a miscellaneous result. You click on the warehouse operations, and then you go to the inventory now. Fine, let us now perform a miscellaneous result. We are now performing a miscellaneous result on this now. So I'll go there. The organization is P503. For which what happens? We'll now make a miscellaneous result. Click on the task carousel, and then what happens? You go there, and then choose the create miscellaneous transaction. I will now make a miscellaneous result for this. So EMI, and then give a tap. It will now reduce the credit. It will now show you. Choose the miscellaneous result. Fine. Go there. And then populate the account number. And remember, the inventory valuation account, whatever has been set previously, what happens? It has become over. And then you is, then I'm putting in the account. So whatever this account will be given by the financials, actually. Fine. Click on plus now. And then we go to populate the item. So I will now say P50 percentage 1. We will now see whether the percentage works or not. Somewhere percentages work. Somewhere it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Of course, it's working. And then not showing you two different combinations. I will now choose the powder 1 now. So, the powder one is not having any exception at all. Automatically, what happens? The primary units of measures default over here. On the transaction line, what about the primary units of measures will be defaulting? And then I'm going to make a change now. I'm going to make a change of this. Change it to what? These are the only three units we can know. Because the item belongs to what happens? Your P50 weight class. And then it has got only these three units of measures. It will now show you only the relevant units of measures of your class, actually. The item belongs to which whichever class, what happens? It shows you the relevant units of measures. So I will now change it to packet. And then here, what happens? I will not populate the comment. So uh, I have not populated the subunity. That is why the quantity is not coming. Fine, go there. And then not populate the subunity over here. Fine, I have got only one subunity. I will not put on this now. Go there. I will not go and then make 10 packets for this. So 10 packets, I am going to make a transaction. So click on plus now. And then I will not go for the second one. Fine, click on plus. And then I will now say P50 percentage 2. <coughs> if you give a tab, what happens? The second item, Porter 2, will be coming now. Again, there are so many items at that point. Powder tools now. The cyclic count item is also coming over here. Now, click on OK now. Fine, we not it. And then drop down the sub inventory. <coughs> sub one. And then I'm overriding the defaulted unit sub measures, which is the primary unit sub measures. And then I'm changing the packet. So I'm changing the packet. And then this is also going to be 10 packets. Now tell me what will be the stock of powder one and powder two reported in the system? Anybody? Powder one will report how much of stock, and then powder two will report how much of stock. Anybody? What will be the reporting as far as this is concerned? So, when you report it, so powder one and powder two will report how much? Anybody? 20 and 30, no, no. 20 and 30 is 100 percent correct. Who is this? Thomas. Thomas is very correct. Now, fine. It is a 20. What are the units now? 
it will be gram sachet. the sachet or packet sachet sachet is very correct my point over there so the powder one will now report 20 sachets the powder two will now report 30 sachets is it clear now fine so thomas is very clear so powder one will now report 20 sachets whereas powder two will now report 30 sachets fine click on submit now fine doubts good so nobody is having any doubt so i'll now submit it and then click on submit and then what happens you'll now see the reporting the transaction is not complete then any issues can go there we will now go and then have a look at this button go there so we will now give a save and close and come out of it and then we will now have a look at it go there so click on it click on the home icon and then here what happens you'll now go to the sales and go to the warehouse operation then go to the inventory now it comes to the main area and the landing page itself will be item quantity actually and manager in quantities and then i'm now going to give a blank search also and click on blank search so what about the organization is already there the double star item what happens one of them is a mandatory one so is already there so no need to put an item back on search it will not show all the items so we have cc1 cc2 cc3 as well as what happens powder on one powder so powder one is now reporting what 20 sachets powder two is reporting 30 sachets this completes the level one difficulty <clears throat> now we go for the level two difficulty Clear on this now. Any doubts on this now? So it will always report on the primary units of measures, which is the stock keeping units of measures. The reporting is always on the SKU. So whatever may be the transaction, you may transact on grams or packets or sachets, whatever it is, it will not report only in sachets, and then it will not do the conversions. So we are now seeing the item specific intra class conversion. Now we are going to see item specific inter class conversion. I know that. So that's what it is. Go there. And then here, what happens? I will know how. What happens? I will know how a quantity class. So let us know first of all get the quantity class. Over there. And let us know go and then get the quantity class. Over there. So click on it, and then we'll now create the quantity class over here. Over there. So this is also same thing. Click on plus now. So let me go and then create the quantity class. We are now into the second level of difficulty now. You can set up a maintenance. Yes, manage unit. Measures and right now, I remember one of my students has lost the job because he couldn't understand the seminar properly. I had a lot of doubts, and then with the doubts, he was feeling shy in the class. It was a classroom training, and then afterwards, what happens? He went there and then wrongly configured. I was working in changes, and then what happens? He was asked to what happens? Leave away immediately. And that 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 type of what happens? Mistake used to happen. Now you go there, go out. So now what happens? Let us go and then create a what happens? Click on the manage units of measures class, and then here what happens? You have plus now. And then let us now create a new class. I go there. So class, it's a what's called quantity class. I'm going to create. And people can just put quantity, quantity class. And remember, in uh, 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 what happens in uh, infusion? What happens? It comes as a blank now. Whereas in EBS, what happens? Everything comes as a seeded actually. Right? I will now say quantity, quantity class because what happens? Not having uh, sufficient characters basically. And go there. P50 is to quantity class. I think it is accessible. Here, I will now make one of them. So here, as per the plan, what happens? I'm going to make what each as the what's called your base unit. Let us now go on the base unit. It's a P50 underscore each. I will now say each. So I'm now creating a class quantity class. <clears throat> And then with the, what happens with the each as the base unit, I think even seven close. I think even seven close. What happens is not completed. So by which is not done. If you go and then query on this, not fine. Go there. Go to the manage units of measures and then make a query on this thing. You'll not get all the things. Not fine. With the percentage, you have to query here. Fine. You have to query with the percentage. Not fine. Click on percentage. And then query. You will not find the quantity class as well as the weight class. So here each is the base unit. Now what I'm going to do is I will now create another units of measures called tin. I'm going to make it. So don't try to imagine this. Only for understanding purposes, we are doing all the things. Let us now create a tin in the quantity class. So we'll now go there and then click on save and close and then come out of it now. And then on the main units of measures, what happens? I will now create a tin now. I click on plus now. Let me create a units of measures called tin. The units of measures is what? P50 underscore tin. I'm going to make it. It's a tin. And then the class is what? You put P50 and then give a tap and then I will now choose the quantity class. Quantity class. Give on. And that's it. And I'm going to get only one now. And go there. Not that. So click on save and close. So the UIM is now created. When you create a UIM, what happens? Will be relating to as basically what happens the base unit only. So it shows you the class as well as the base unit of measures when you create a new unit of measures. And click on save and close. So as and when you create it, what happens? We have to give that what happens? Your standard your conversion. You have to give the standard conversion. So click on the manage UIM standard conversion and then let us go. In. And then here click on plus now. So here what happens? I'm going to make it as what one ten is equal to ten each. Now. There is the relationship I'm going to make. 
So unit sum method is what P50. And then give it a tab. And then now choose the tin now and go there. Tin is now coming and go there. And then click on the conversion. Fine, here what happens? There is not showing you the tin. And then what happens? How much is each? Now and go there. Tin each. So every unit sum method will be related to this base unit. And go there. So tin. One inch is fine. Give us a tin close now. Now, if I want to transact on tin, it is not possible for me because powder belongs to what? The powder belongs to weight class. The item powder and powder and belongs to weight class. And then I cannot transact on tin because tin belongs to what happens to quantity class. The tin belongs to quantity class. So since the tin belongs to quantity class, what happens? I cannot take it. So what happens? We have to make a what happens? A relationship between these two classes. Like what happens? Uh, if India and Pakistan are going to speak, what happens? The four external advice ministers will be basically Sushma Savaraj and then what happens? The Pakistan's counterpart will be speaking actually. Not that the sand of uh, India and Pakistan will now speak. Fine, fine. It will not happen. So the external affairs ministers will be speaking. So similarly, what happens? We are now going to relate these two classes. The quantity class and weight class. The quantity class is represented by the base unit called each. And then the weight class is represented by the grams. And then we are going to relate these two things. So we are now going to relate what? The each and then the grams. Fine. The each and then the grams you are going to relate on an interclass conversion. The interclass conversion is what? We are now relating two classes. That is called peer to peer conversion. Now. So we will now relate two different peers and then what happens? We are going to relate it. So quantity class represented by each and then your what happens? Your weight class represented by grams. Fine. Those two bases we are going to make it. Fine. We are going to make a relationship. And again, what happens? It is the item specific. So both interclass and intraclass are item specific. Intraclasses are item specific exceptions, whereas interclass are item specific peer to peer conversions. Interclasses are item specific peer to peer conversion. So we will now relate these two classes on an interclass conversion. So good actions now. So we have now completed the UM classes. We have done the standard classes. We have done the intraclass. Now we go for the interclass, which is the level two complexity now. Interclass conversion, we are going to do it now. I click on it and then we will go there. Click on plus now. So let me create it now. So item is what? I will now put P50, percentage 2, and then give it a tab. <clears throat> somewhere percentages work, somewhere it's not working. So take advantage of this now. Go there. Click on the, oh, okay. And click on this border 2 and go there. For border 2, what happens? From base unit, fine. P50 percentage. Fine. Go there. It is an interclass conversion. Fine. So it is an interclass conversion. What happens? I am going to do it now. Fine. Go there. On which one? We are going to do it now. Go there. We'll now see this one. And P50 percentage, P50, and then give it a tab. Now. So from base unit, fine. Go there. Each is now automatically coming. Fine. Go there. There is no other units because the base unit will be coming. Fine. And then what happens? Here, the powder 2, which belongs to what? Your weight class, which is having a grams as a base units, is now related to the quantity class of the base. Now. Fine. Go there. And what is so what is the conversion? We're going to see the conversion. Now. Fine. Go there. So the conversion is what? We go there and see it's not fine. Go there. <clears throat> so the conversion is what? One each is equal to 100 grams. That is the conversion. So I'm just putting it and go there. I will now put what 100 grams as a conversion. So it is. It has to be read like this now. One each is equal to 100 grams. Like this, what happens? You have to read it now. So one each is equal to 100 grams. So this is called item specific intra class conversions. We are into level two complexity. Got it now? Fine. So for each and every item, we have to specify the peer to peer conversion. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? It will not work at all. So it's one each. Is equal to 100 grams. Clear on this now? Any doubts? Now we can very well transact on what? Tin also, because what happens? Your weight class as well as the quantity class are related. In the quantity class, what happens? We have a unit submitter called tin. We can very well transact on tin because what happens? We have now done the relationship. We have done the relationship. We have done, we have done the peer to peer relationship. No, we can create, we can transact on all the units of measures of weight class as well as all the units of measures on quantity class. In quantity class, I have got only one tin now. Okay, fine, good. So it is not understood. Any doubts? <coughs> so click on save and close. So we are now defined. And remember, it is an item specific one. Powder one, we cannot transact on tin. Only in powder two, we can transact on tin. Remember, fine. powder one, we can transact only on what happens? Your grams, sachet, and packet. Whereas for powder two, tin also can be transacted because we have now done the peer to peer conversion. So click on save and close by which what happens is now getting completed. And go there. Now, we are now going to have an exception also. On the, this is called the destination class, actually. The thing which is now originating, fine. The the what happens? The powder is now originating on the weight class, and then what happens? It is now related to what happens? Your quantity class. So the quantity class is known as a destination class actually. 
in one of the destination class. So on the destination class, what happens? We have an exception. Normally, what happens? One tier is written each. What happens? We have an intra-class item-specific exception for four to two. What happens? They say that in one ten, we can even put fifteen each also. And do that. It's a very complex topic. What happens? You have to take uh, very clear notes and then see. But these complexities will be even more, much more uh, in a real field also. Right? There are some companies where what happens? They'll be having their own classes and their own uh, measurements basically. So what happens? We have to be very cautious. If uh, uh, if an implementation is very simple and straightforward, we don't have any problem. Fine, it will be very easy. So unit sub measures can be very easy to very complex. Fine, it all depends upon in which industry you're working upon. So now what happens? We are going to have an intra class exception on the destination class. Fine, we go there and then we go there. We don't go there. So you go there. Go to the actions and then go to the intra class exception. This can be done only after intra class is defined. If intra class is not defined, intra class cannot be defined for this quantity and weight. Or the quantity weight cannot do it. So after defining the peer-to-peer -peer conversion for the item two, then only what happens again? Fine, go to the intra class. So in the intra class, keep a plus. Item plus item. I'm going to put now. Again, it is item specific now. Both intra class and intra class are item specific actually. Fine, go to the P50 percentage two. Take it down. Go to the item one. You know, and the item one, if you do it, what happens? It will not come at all. Go so going to fine, go there. from units of measures. Fine, go there. I'm going to do it. So what happens? It is what on tins we are going to have this exception. So I will now give a percentage and then I give a tab and then I give a tab. Fine, go there. So it is what does <coughs> percentage tip? What happens? I'll now say P50. Okay, percentage is not working here. Somewhere percentage works, somewhere doesn't work. Where is not working at all? Go there. Since the percentage is coming, go there. I will now say P50 and then give a tab. Now. It works as a start with actually. Fine, if your percentage doesn't somewhere percentage works, somewhere percentage doesn't work. Fine, choose the team. Fine, go there. Click on them. Click on them. So din is coming. Fine, go there. So one tin is called ten each. Now, fine. I'm going to have an exception of what fifteen each. Fine, go there. Whatever the customer says, what happens? You have to exactly configure. First of all, what happens? Identify all the relationships. Whatever is giving on paper very clearly. Fine. If you have done it on paper very clearly, then putting it on the system is jujubi. Fine. That is not a big deal. But what happens? People don't put it on paper clearly at all. That is the biggest problem. These relationships, they don't get it properly from the customer and then putting on the paper and then getting his approval. Fine. So because what happens, they will, in one case is what happens, uh, one box is uh, where can handle it only what happens, uh, uh, 10 keyboards actually. But if you keep monitor, we can keep only one monitor in the box. Fine. There is an exception. Fine. Normally what happens, one box will 10 each for what happens, uh, mouses and keyboards and something else. Say. For monitor, it will be one. And then this guy has not configured the exception properly. So what happens uh, while shipping, the shipping, uh, it has come to the shipping department to tell, uh, ship some 10 monitors in one box. They thought that this guy is now giving some mistake or something like that. And then what happens? Uh, they have packed in 10 boxes and then sent out. And then he's a one-time customer and then he's gone. Away. And then when you make some mistakes, what happens? It will be happening like that. Right? You're not pushing the, put the proper, what happens? Uh, your exceptions and other things. What happens? It may even be a loss of thing. It is going to be, a, a, what happens? Uh, your one-time customer who just walks in and then what happens? He takes and then go away. You know, and he'll not be able to track it also. And there will be so many difficulties will be coming fine go there. Uh, wrong shipments will happen if you are not, what happens, you're putting the appropriate exceptions and units of measure conversions properly. The best thing is what? Whatever you are observing it, what happens, you make a mail to them. Right? You make it, this is what I'm going to configure. They may not respond to you. The customer may not respond to you. But what happens, if there is a problem, they will not respond to you. Right? And you can even have a standard disclaimer. What happens, if there is no reply for this mail within 48 hours time, uh, so the content seems to be agreed by the customer like that what happens you'll have a standard disclaimer so you always put your standard company's disclaimer on the bottom so that what happens your mails even if you don't get a response what happens the customer has agreed upon that is how what happens it is, it is understood actually because they don't normally respond to <clears throat> but at least bring it to the knowledge of the customer so that what happens they may even make a check whether whatever they are saying everything is okay or not fine the conversions what are you doing you'll be having hundreds and hundreds of items hundreds and hundreds of conversions basically fine everything has to be very clearly uh, trapped and then put on the system if it is going to be complex if it is going to be simple it is okay fine doesn't matter but if it is complex you have to be very careful on this <clears throat> now what happens i have not done it fine go there so one tin will put each fine box so we are not done it fine go there let me go on and save it now so any dip, dip, any thing on the intra class and inter class kind of thing, click on save and close. I'm not doing it now. It's not 15 now. And click on save and close not found. Now I'm going to make a miscellaneous result. So let me go and then make a miscellaneous result. I will not make a miscellaneous result. What happens? If I go and then transact on 10 tins now, fine. It will be reporting on sashes actually. Fine. Remember, powder 2 is going to report on sashes now. Fine. It's going to report on sashes. So when you transact on 10 tins, what happens? The tin will be first of all converted to each now. 
So from the destination class, what happens from the transaction unit to what happens the destination base unit, it will now come. And then from that, what happens, it will now go to our base unit. Now. From the destination class to the source base unit, it will now come. And then from the source unit, what happens, it will now do a conversion to the primary units. So there will be three conversions which will be taking place. Right. So destination, uh, transaction to destination base, destination base to primary base, and then the primary base to primary, uh, what happens, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the main class to what, primary uh, base to primary uh, UIM base. That, that's how it will not come. So there will be three such transactions now, fine. the transaction will not take place like this. First of all, 10 will be converted each now, fine. and then normally what happens, it will be only 100 each, and then because of the exception, what happens, it will be 150 each, because item 2 has got an exception on the intra class. So 10 tens will be equal to 150 each now. And then there will be a peer to peer conversion. Fine. So the quantity class each will be related to your what happens, your weight class grams. No, fine. It will be there. And remember, in this conversion, we cannot have any exception at all. When you have a peer to peer conversion, what happens if we cannot have an exception as such? No, fine. You cannot have an exception as such. Fine. Again, it is item specific actually. I know that. It will now go there. It will now into 100 now. And then 150 into 100 will be what? It will be from grams. It will now go to sachets. It will now report 1500. And then we already have a stock of 30. And so the new stock will be 1530 sachets. When they transact 10 tins. Is it clear? It's a very tough one. And remember, it may even be more tough also. <coughs> it may even be more tough also. I have seen things where what happens, the thing will be very tough now. So let us now go and then make a transaction on the tins. Go there, click on it now. Go there. So it is not done now. Go there, click on that. And then I will now go to the what's called your manage item quantities and then get what happens. We click on this directly and then go to the create miscellaneous transaction and then let me create it now. So MI, and then you tap now. There is no sound coming at all. That means what everybody has understood it is excellent actually fine. That's fine. But you have to work upon, then only what happens, you have to write down each and everything, whatever I'm speaking of. I know that click on plus now, fine, let us go and then pull out. We'll now go the item, fine, go there. Item is what, powder 2, fine, go there. P50 percentage 2, and then you tap the powder 2 and go there. Now powder 2 can be transacted in 4 units of measures. Previously what happens, only gram sachets and packet will coming. Because of the interclass exceptions, interclass conversions, what happens, we can now transact in 4 units of measures. Fine. The tin is also coming. So the tin and then the each also coming. Fine. There are now 5 units of measures. Fine. These 3 belongs to weight class and then tin and each belongs to quantity class. I will not transact in 10 days. And then I will not go there and then put the 10 quantities over here. Fine. Go there, put the sub sub entry. So put sub entry over here and go for 10 quantities. I click on 10 and go there. And then click on Submit. So the 10 tins will be reported as 1500 sachets now. Any doubts? 10 tins I am transacting. I'm transacting on tins. So the transactional units of measures will be converted to the primary units of measures through three conversions now. Click on submit. Now what happens? We'll be go and make a search on this. It is we'll make a search for it. We'll do that. Go there. One the chi. We got it. As 1530 sachets. This completes the second level of complexity. Anybody can say that you understood? <coughs> Somebody has to see me. Or you have to work out or <laughs> what exactly is your feedback? <laughs> yeah, I uh, arrive here and I have to uh, listen again. and. Uh... <laughs> I know that, yeah. So you have to listen again and then take notes. Now. Please take notes. That's very, very important. There are only not much of entities on the units of measures. Now. I will not tell you what are the units of measures. One is what? The class. A class is nothing but a collection of relevant units of measures. Then what happens? You'll have a base units of measures. Fine. The base unit is the one with which what happens? All other units of measures are related actually. Fine. Every unit of measures will be having a relation to the base one. So the class, the base units of measures. Then afterwards, what happens? You'll be having a standard conversion. So you'll be having a standard conversion of all the units of measures to the base basically. Fine. Then afterwards, what happens? You'll be having an intra-class conversion. Intra-class conversions are item specific conversions which are only within the same class which are only for within the same class, item specific exceptions. Then what happens, we'll be having inter-class conversion. When you wanted to relate two different classes, fine, like weight and volume, or weight and length, or weight and quantity, whatever it is, then that case, what happens, the inter-class conversion comes in future, and then that is also item specific. We define it. And then what happens, we'll be having this. So on the units of measures, what happens, we have what? Your classes, your base units of measures, your standard conversion, your intra-class conversion, and then your inter-class conversion. And then the item, we have a primary units of measures. So the primary units of measures is a stock keeping units of measures. What happens? The stock gets reported only on the SKU. Fine, it will be reporting only on the SKU. So whatever may be the transactional units of measures, it may be in any class, 
what happens using the inter intra class conversions what happens it will not perform the calculations automatically so these calculations are done automatically but what happens it is only for our understanding i am now splitting it to three the system does it immediately within a, within no no within a fraction of second it will be doing it i remember we have to track each and everything very clearly to whatever relationship they are saying it for us See, preferably what happens i ask all the people but when the when the unit submitter is complex for the client what happens you give a email confirmation to them I mean, they will not confirm you back you write to them and then with a stamp disclaimer what happens this is what you have done and then there will be hundreds of such relationships which will be they will be telling sometimes on a meeting what happens they will not tell verbally fine write it and then what happens they get a confirmation for and what else otherwise what happens if you make a wrong conversion and then if the dispatching is going to be what happens wrong it will be causing a heavy problem for the what happens customers and only at the time of dispatch what happens they will not verify the dispatching section will not even uh, query your sales uh, customer sales representative also right? if it has come what happens they will not see simply back and then they will send it the order so it must be very proper as well. so this completes the second level of complexity we now go to the ultimate level level 3 now level 3 is about <clears throat> so second one is not it so we will go for the ultimate level level 3 of this unit submissions complexity so there what happens uh, when you go and then see in the, the zinc sheet right? and if you buy in the market what happens these sheets are what happens very costly so what happens in the market they will not measure in meters and then give it to you right they will not measure in weight actually one roll they will not weigh so one roll will be weighing approximately let us say 5 kilograms so they will not weigh 1 kilo one roll right the one roll may be 50 meters in length and then what happens it will be a thin sheet and then what happens it will be having this much of weight as a 5 kilos or 10 kilos and then you know pay money based upon the weight actually but in the manufacturing what happens when you want to issue what happens you will not issue one meter length of what happens your sheet actually so what you do is you will not take a scissors and then you will not cut it the cutting will not be exactly proper so it will be slightly zigzag basically so when you cut it what happens let us say one meter is equal to one kilo or whatever it is and then when you measure it what happens you will not be one one thousand grams actually it will be nine ninety grams or one thousand ten grams it happens so when you are issuing this sheet to the uh, shop floor. you would like to track it both on primary unit submissions as well as in secondary unit submissions also so in this case what happens the primary unit is length the secondary unit is weight actually in grams also you would like to know so in such cases what happens you know say we have issued 5 meters of what happens a zinc sheet and then which is now weighing 5025 grams so for the company what happens both the measurements are very very important because what happens they buy it in grams and then they issue it in meters actually so what happens in such cases what happens you'll be doing what your yeah, measurement in both primary as well as in secondary unit sectors in i config i worked for uh, srs for the consultancy activity there what happens all the unit submissions are dual unit submissions everything is dual unit submissions all the items are dual unit submissions because what happens there the weight and length are very very important for the company so likewise what happens in the in the textile yarn yarn meter what happens there you will be having these things coming up as dual unit submissions coming up so let us now go there and then what happens let us now create <coughs> yeah <coughs> class now <coughs> i'm going to get the length class with that my explanation is clear for you about the dual unit submissions now there are even more complexities which are coming up right? on the on the dual unit submissions will you fine will not more than see so in the third level what happens there are again three subdivisions now fine the level 3 3.1 3.2 3.3 again three different complexities are there right? will now start with the 3.1 they're going to part so first of all let me create my length class Go there. Let us now create the link to class. So go there, and then I will now go to the sub measurements. I will go to the manage unit sub measures, and then I will now go to the link to class. I click on it. So click the manage unit sub measures now. I go there. I will now create. I click on class now. So let me get the link to class. So class is what P fifty underscore link. Right, link to the one. I go there. It is a link to measurement. so in some industries what happens where uh, you are having chemicals petrochemicals laboratories what happens they will be having very many measurements basically one pipette will be there one burette will be there find how they are related all these things will be there is a very complex one and sometimes what happens you not be able to imagine this. <clears throat> so in that case what happens you just put whatever they are saying measurement and that's what is go there and then here the base unit is what i will not say meters now it's a p50 <clears throat> Let's go meters. Meters. I go there. And then I will not say it's meters. Meters. Go there. So I have now created a class 
with the meters as the base unit summers here what happens i am not going into much of a complexity here what happens you can have multiple complexity span with that i am not going into big complexities because what happens i have to explain the dual unit summers concept so i am not bringing in complexities over here now fine go that click on seven close so the complexities are all intra class and then inter class fine if you have it what happens you are doing now so again what happens you go there and then query for it now fine go that go to the manager unit summers and then go to the p50 and then percentage and then go query and click on search somewhere percentage works somewhere doesn't work And then Oracle says that the search engine is excellent. I don't know how they have configured all this. No matter, it doesn't work. So here, what happens? The link is there. Man, all this quantity page and this. <clears throat> I was with the, in uh, what happens? The Oracle's headquarters in the Redwood shows. I was running this training actually. Right? <laughs> Those guys were also. I asked that girl, "Come on, come here." You see, there are all so much of a, this thing. Is there how you are claiming that what happens? Your search engine is excellent. No, no, no. I, it, I was asked to tell like that. <laughs> Don't ask so much of a question. Please, no matter what. Then she is saying that okay, I also understand that what happens. It is not that good actually. Right? But uh, they claim that what happens, whatever they have done is all excellent actually. But as far as uh, procurement is concerned, they have done an excellent job. And I have worked on the procurement module. I have configured it for some three, four clients. What happens? It is a really very good. I mean, compared to eBiz, no point. All the problems of eBiz has been identified, and then it has been nicely addressed too. And then even the what happens the customers even express the satisfaction is really nice. Even though each and every function of procurement has not come fine, is coming. And then whatever they have done is done. It's all depend upon the what happens the team which is working upon. And inventory what happens so many features are ready to come actually. And then they will be coming soon. They are saying coming, coming, coming. <coughs> I don't know when this is going. And then uh, it will be very difficult like Anita to convince the end customers that what happens the fusion is better than eBiz. If a person is coming from eBiz to fusion, what happens they will not ask so many questions. It will be very difficult. It will not. It is a product is not in a fully matured state. Actually, fine. It is not getting gradually developed. Right? Now, what I am going to do is I will now create what I will now uh, will now create three items. I am going to get now. First item I am going to get as well. I'll go there. We will now create our first item for this now. Fine. It is a three point one exercise. Fine. So let me go and then create my first item. So go to the home and then we will now create the first item. I am not going to have it as a dual unit submitters. Now, fine. remember, in some companies, uh, almost all the items will be dual unit submitters. Now, fine. You have to be very careful in configuring it. Click on it. And then before this, what happens? I have forgotten one thing. Now, fine. Go that. In this place, I have not given the standard commercial. Go that. Uh, oh, I have got only length. Now, okay, fine. There is nothing else. Okay. Length is only that, so there is no standard commercial. Otherwise, if you have any other unit submitters, we have to go on and give the standard commercial also. Go that. Go that. So go there. Click on the create item. So I am not going to create a first item. Fine. Go that. Click on create item. So let me go on and create my first item. Organizations what P50, <coughs> and then what happens? You go there zero, and then the item class is root item class. <coughs> so click on OK. So we are now into 3.11, 3.1 complexity. The item. I will now say what happens? P50. Fine. Dual <coughs> underscore UOM underscore one. So dual UOM. I'll go there. And then I will now say. Uh, uh, Dual UOM test one. So go there now. Getting an item. Go there. We long go there. Go this place. Here, what happens? I'm not going to go as length as the unit submitters. No fine. The primary unit submitter is length. Right. Fine. Go there. I will not choose the length. Fine. Is meters. Primary unit submitter is meters. Fine. Go there. Okay. And then I'm going to track it on primary and secondary. Fine. Drop it down. I will not do the primary and secondary track. The pricing will be again primary. Fine. Pricing, pricing of the order management can be on a primary or secondary. We can use this now. Fine. Go there. So depending upon this, let's say for uh, you, when you are issuing in millimeters, what happens? The pricing will be only on grams, basically, or kilogram weight. So in this case, what happens? You will be pricing only on secondary and not on the primary. Fine. The order management. Actually, fine. Go there. Conversion is both basically fine. Whether you want to have item specific or standard, you can even have item specific conversion. But otherwise, what happens? You will be having standard as well as item specific both. And normally, conversions will be both. The secondary unit submitter is in grams now. Fine, go there. P50, and then tap. This is now getting opened up because it's now primary and secondary. So once you put a primary and secondary, what happens? It opens up, and I will now put grams. I configured this uh, dual unit submitters for G actually. In G, what happens? Both of them belongs to the same class. Like what happens uh, in Kazakhstan? Uh, what they were doing is uh, they were booking the orders in kilograms, and uh, they have a manufacturing unit. One of the customers' manufacturing unit is in US actually. So US always manufacture in pounds actually. So this guy is now booking the order in uh, what happens here kilograms, and then they are manufacturing in pounds. So what happens every time they have to use the calculator and go there, two point two point something like that, two point two something like this there. So they'll be putting it at the what happens? They'll be giving a revised work order for what happens. They were unable to understand about how to use it. Now. Even though they know primary the dual unit submitters, then I told them about how to do it. Now. So what happens? I made what 
the shipping must be on the primary units of measures the booking must be on the secondary units of measures i made a clarification then i set up everything and then i configured it so then afterwards whatever the iris so worked very perfectly so i configured it for g actually fine when i was conducting the training whatever they were having this problem so i configured it for one of the customers who is having kazakhstan as a what happens as the area of booking and then what happens the manufacturing was in us so both of them belongs to the same thing right? both of them belongs to the and what is was so there what happens the conversion is fixed at so 1 kilo is going to 2.2 not to let us say whatever it is the conversion is fixed so we are going to begin our 3.2 complexities with what happens with the fixed date of conversion and you know is what grams is the one so here what happens i am not using the same class but a different class this is a length class and then here what happens is a, is a weight class and then the default control is what 3.1 is fixed and then what happens the 3.2 is the default and then 3.3 will be no default so we are going to begin with a fixed one that means what we cannot make a change on the conversion at all we cannot have any deviations at all so no deviations are basically possible so we are into 3.11 complexity 3.1 complexity i not created you know and the length is a matter and then is what the second unit of measures in grams and then click on the associations and then go there and then here what happens let me associate with the child log select mat and then let me associate with the child log it's a p 503 enter now select and then click on apply and done and by which one of the more than not so that and go there seven close and go there item is now created the dual units of measures and go there seven close now i cannot transact it another way is i make a, what happens a conversion for this one and go there if i try to make a transaction it will not allow it and go there go to manage item count is and then let me try to make a transaction on this one and go there click on create miscellaneous transaction so let me go there and then put this now and go there mi and then give it a tab and go to the miscellaneous is click on okay now i will not put the account over here now and go there account is one i'm choosing this account right click on plus now let me put the item over here now. So I'll now say P50. Right, <coughs> do and then give it a no. The dual unit sum is going to go there. Sub unit I am putting it not going to go there. Sub one and then I am going to put what happens the meters is what 10 meters and then if you give it a no, it will not allow it all because you have not defined the conversion between the primary and secondary actually. You must define the UM conversion between units of measures uh, and then the what happens the is it is it to something is not coming actually fine go there. It's a primary and secondary conversion as we did. Then only what happens it will be possible. So give a cancel now. So let us not define the units of measure of conversions. It will not go to space, and then here in this place, what happens? We will not give the conversion. So here it is an intra-class conversion. Fine, go there. It is the intra-class conversion. Go to the actions, and then go to the intra-class conversion. And remember, an uh, intra-class or intra-class conversion. After all, it may even have an intra-class conversion also. I am not going for the complexity. I am not going for a basic level only. Go there. Manage intra-class conversion. Since what happens? Both the primary and secondary belongs to different classes. We have to go for intra-class conversion. if they belong to the same class then this is not required then it is not required then what happens your standard conversion is more than sufficient so since they belong to different classes what happens we have to give the inter class conversion if this is not done what happens it will not work at all you go there and then click on plus one and then here put the item over here now and i will not put the item over here now and go the p50 capital d and then give it tab the item so i am putting the item fine with the dual unit of measures now and go there the small d you go there and then From the base unit here, the left hand side must be the destination units of measures. Remember, the left hand side must be destination units of measures. Fine, go there. P fifty and then grams is the one. Fine, give it tap. So the left hand side must be destination units of measures. Here, go there. Click on okay. Whereas in EBS, it comes very clearly as destination. Now, if you go on and see on this one now, if you go to the conversions now, and then if you go to the interclass conversion, what happens? It makes mentions the left hand side is destination actually. Fine. Here, it is not mentioning as a destination. Fine. Here, you only have to understand this. Fine, go there. It is the destination units of measures now. Fine. On the items destination unit some measures, and then here is the meter. How much it is? I go there. One gram is equal to how many meters? I will not say point one meters, or point not one meters. I am not putting point not one meters. That means what? One meter is equal to hundred grams. So it is like this now. Find the destination to base, destination to what? I am source actually. It is the destination to source we are doing. This is relationship. So then only what? I am going to do it. If it is a point not one, that means what? One meter is equal to hundred grams. That is what it is. Is it clear? Good then, fine. Go there. You understood again. As Arivu told me, what happens? Everybody has to again listen to this and then take notes and then do it. Now, fine. Go there. Click on seven close. We are into three point one complexity. Fine. Click on seven close. By which what happens? They not mentioned. It is not done. Go there. Seven close. Now let us go and then do the relationship. Go there. We will not do the transaction. Fine. Go there. So we will now go to the what happens? The create miscellaneous transaction. Click on yes. Now, fine. Come on, okay. And then we will not do it. So click on it and then click on create miscellaneous transaction and then let us not do this.
go there. It's a MI and then give a tab now. I will not choose the miscellaneous result over here now. Fine, go there. And then click on what happens, account number. Go there. And then click on plus now. Let me put the item over here. So here, it's a P50. D and then give a tab now. And then put the sub inventory over here now. <coughs> sub inventory. And then here, what happens? You go to the quantity. Fine, quantity. So quantity is what? Uh, what happens? Let us say uh, 10 meters now. Fine. One meter is equal to 100 grams. Fine, go there. You click on the view details now. If you click on the view details, you click on the view details. Here, what happens? You now see that secondary unit is now coming automatically. So 10 meters is what? It is a thousand grams basically. And then if you make a change of the secondary unit, let us say 100, and then if you make it, the primary units gets changed. And then if you make a change, what happens? If you put 15, the secondary units gets changed. Right. So that means what? The conversion is fixed. We cannot make any changes to the conversion at all. The conversion is fixed between the primary and secondary. And go there. I'm putting it and go us. And then I click on it now. This is called fixed conversion. Fine. That is 3.1. 3.1 level is what fixed now. Go there, go there, click on OK, and then click on submit, by which what happens, the transaction gets complete. And then if you go and then measure it, what happens, it will now show in both the units of it. Go there. So we'll now query for this now, go to the advanced search, and then query the item now. And go there. I will now query the item, find P50, D, and then give a tab now. I'm going to query it now. And go there. The elements, and then click on search now. It will now report on primary and secondary. And go there. So the secondary is not coming home. Go to the views, and then go to the columns, and then add the secondary now. Find the secondary quantity. Uh, we'll not say on and we'll not add this add this, add this column also. And we'll not show you. So the primary unit of measures as well as the secondary is now reported. Some companies will be interested in both. How much of meter has been issued and then how much is the weight of this. So in this case, what happens? There is no deviation, and so what happens? It works soon. Now let us now go for the 3.2 level now. Fine. 3.2 is what we are now going to have a default. Fine. Go there. So let us now go and then create an item, fine. which is for the 3.2. And the next level of this, go there. click on create an item. I will not be creating the next rate. Click on create it up. So let me get the next rate. Go there. It's a P50 zero. <coughs> the master of it. Go there. So the root item class now. Root item class and go there. And then let us now complete this. I click on OK now. And just complete and go there. And then I will now create the second item. And go there. Click on it. And then it is a P50 underscore dual. Fine. Underscore UEM underscore two. I'm putting it now. And go there. It is what's called a fixed default. <laughs> fixed. What happens a conversion now? So fixed to conversion. Fixed conversion and go there. So this is what is so the dual unit sub measures two. I'm now making it up and go there here. What happens? I'm now making it as what the same thing. Fine P50 and then meters now. I'm not choose the meters over here now and go there. Meters. And then this side, what happens? I'm now make it as what? Primary and secondary. Primary and secondary. And then here what happens? We go there. It's the grams now. Fine P50 and then give a tab now. <clears throat> I'll now have the grams now here. Fine, what happens? Previously, we haven't seen the fixed. Fixed means what? No changes here. What happens? I'll now go for a default. Now, uh, I will not tell you what exactly is the scenario here, now, right, the default. Here, what happens, the deviations are allowed. Right, go there. So, one meter is equal to 100 grams. Now. But sometimes what happens, it may even exceed also. When you're cutting in a zigzag fashion, here what happens, let us say, 10% is allowed. Plus or minus 10% is allowed. It will be normally 1% or so, what happens in the industry. So, when you're cutting it, what happens, if the cut pieces is now deviating on the weight by plus or minus 10%, what happens, it is allowed. But if it is beyond, what happens is they have to throw the piece into your dustbin only. You are not supposed to use it actually. So it will be normally 1% or 2% depending upon the industry standards. Fine. So if the piece which is cut, fine, it is 1 meter, you are cutting it. And then if the weight is now beyond 100 grams by more than 10% or less than 10%, what happens that piece is discarded and then will not be issued to manufacturing at all. Clear on this now? Fine. This is called default. In a fixed one, what happens is no changes is possible now. Fine. The primary will automatically pop into the secondary. Here in this case, what happens? You have to write the secondary. We can even make a change of the secondary. Go there. Go to the associations. Then let me associate to the child or not. Go there. I will now click on actions and then go to select and add. So I am now associating the child or not. Go there. It's a P503 and then entering now. Put it on. Click on apply and then click on done. And go there. It is not done. So click on save and close. Now what happens is the fixed default. Remember, it is a fixed one. And then click on it. The not fixed one is a, is a default actually. Is a default. So 3.2 complexity we are now working upon. And then as such, what happens? You go there and then give the what happens? Your conversion now fine. If you don't give the conversion, you won't be done. Fine. Go there. You now go then do the conversion. Go there. The interclass conversion has to be done. Since we are now doing on what two different classes. Otherwise, if and then interclass and then interclass and then interclass also may come. Fine. Remember, <laughs> there may be even more complexities. I'm not touching this in this place basically. Fine. Go there. And then click on plus now. And then I will not populate the item. I go there. P50. Find capital D. Percentage 2. And then give it up. It is the second item. Go there. 
and then here what happens the destination class is grams now 550 and then put the grams over here now so now choose the grams over here now choose the grams so it will not show you only the base units of both the classes basically that's fine the grams is the base units and is not showing you find over there and then what happens you know saying the base units of this now find over there so is the grams and then here what happens i am not putting in meters actually fine the meters so here what happens i now put the same level fine 0 0.0.01 and that means what one meter is going to 100 grams the same conversion i'm putting so they are all item specific conversions and so for a each and every item we have to mention it fine the inter class conversions are right up both intra class and inter class items are like and so what happens we have to mention for each and every item the conversion fine remember on the left hand side is destination that is the secondary units of measures and then the right hand side must be primary units of measures because if i close now i will check not that now it may even work otherwise also but i am not sure about it but that is the way in which what happens we are habituated to do it on the on the eb is basic on the distribution side you do it now so even if you give in the reverse manner i, I am not sure about it fine make a check up now we go on that make a transaction i click on this and then you go to the manager item count and then we will not make a miscellaneous so click on it so click on miscellaneous create miscellaneous transaction and go there mi and then give a tab now <clears throat> go there and the miscellaneous result and then populate the account over here now and go there click on one and then populate the account now let us now put this item over here go there is p50 capital d percentage 2 and then give a tab now second item put it now go there sub inventory and populate it sub inventory and populate it so let me populate the sub inventory and then what happens i am not going to put the quantity i will not go over the view details and then put the quantity <laughs> so here what happens when i put the primary as 10 now what happens the secondary will be defaulted as 1000 now fine give a tab the primary will be default and secondary will be default now i am not going to make a change now fine it is not 1000 grams sir it is 1010 grams now fine go there you change it 1010 and then give a tab so when you measure it what happens you are finding the grams is now exceeded and give a tab so it will not ask you shall i convert the primary also to one point equivalent to this or i will not leave it as such it will not ask fine do you want me to convert it now fine do you want the transaction want to be updated i will not say no it will say okay it is accepting it But you will say if I am going to go for one thousand one zero one now, it is now beyond ten percent, beyond ten percent, right? Beyond ten percent, right? The ten percent is what one thousand one hundred. So if I measure it as one thousand one hundred two, and then give a tap, and then say don't convert the one. If you give a no, what happens? It will not say here. This transaction is not allowed at all because it is not deviating beyond the limit space. So the piece which has been cut for ten meters has to be discarded. It cannot be transacted at all. When you measured the weight. What happens then? You are putting it as one thousand one hundred one. What happens? That piece is now discarded. Otherwise, what happens? You cut extra, and then what happens? You measure it again, and then make the transaction. Yes. Got it? Anybody has understood it? Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good, very good. What about Thomas and Anita? Yeah, ma'am. Good, good, good. Fine, good. <clears throat> yes, sir. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's good. Fine. So even Viru has also understood. Fine. Beautiful. <laughs> Yes. So if you go on and put what happens, one zero zero one zero nine nine, it will accept. Okay, the deviation is allowed. Okay, what else? So what happens? They don't say no to this now, and then it will not give any throw in error. Okay, what else? One zero nine nine is coming. Then click on OK, and then click on submit. What happens in that? So many industries, like especially the cotton industries, will be using these units of measures, and then the deviation is very very important. What they do is they pack it in the, what happens in your this thing now. And then, if uh, what happens if the weight has gone beyond what happens that uh, that entire what happens the the entire gunny bag will be rejected actually. Fine, they have to push 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 and then do it now. Fine, they will ask you to repack it. Fine, so that should not go beyond this. And then what happens in that? And then you go and then what happens you go and then see the quantity over here now. Fine, go there and then see this one. It will not be reporting over there. So go there. I will not say P fifty percentage two now. Percentage two. It will not tap. And then click on it and then go for it. What is this here? P fifty. We need to search now. The percentage sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't work. I don't understand this. Some places it works. I go there. The dual units are made as one. Capital D, no? Okay. I made a mistake. I have not made a mistake yet. Okay. It's not coming. I click on search now. It will not report one zero nine nine. So second report is also good. Now the next one is no default. In the no default, what happens? It will never prompt you at all. Fine. When you put ten, what happens? The thousand is getting prompted now. So that will not be prompting at all. That is also required in many industries. We now come to 3.3 level complexity. Can go there. We go for the next one now. And there's a final level. Can go there. We click on it now. And then click on. And then let us now create an item. Go there. Click on create item. So there is the ultimate level <coughs> of complexity. Go there. P of T and then zero. Now put that. Go there. The root item class now. <coughs> and then click on OK. And then put the item over here. So P of T. 
and is that dual underscore uom underscore three. The ultimate one, no default. No default. <laughs> is a no default. And then you go to the specifications now and go the here. So what happens? I'm going to make a change now. I'm going to people click and then I'm going to make it a meter now. So let me make it as a meter. Thank you. Okay now. It will be tracked on primary and secondary now. And then here, what happens? I'm going to put the grams now. And the same thing I'm going to follow it up. Remember, it may belong to different classes or it may even belong to the same classes. Also. And I'm now choosing on a different class actually. And then go with that. And then what happens? If the fixed has been seen, the default has been seen. Now is a no default. Now it will not default. And so what happens? The person who is measuring it does not know how it has to be. Otherwise, what happens? The people will now have a, have a habit of civility. You know? Fine. And then I will now give it 10%. Is a no default means what? The 10, if you give it, what happens? It will not default at all. Some industries will not prefer only a no default. Because the man who is transacting it does not know the conversions as well as what are the, the percentage deviations. Basically. The deviations won't be going. So they would like to put him exactly whatever he has measured actually. That is what they want. So for which what happens, it will be no default. Go to the association, then let me associate it. Click on the association, then click on actions, and then go to the self mat, and then let me associate it. And then associate with the child or nothing. Go to the P503, and then enter in nothing. Go to the select it, and then click on apply and done. Go to the, you know that. And then let us now save it. It is a no default. It's a no default. Click on save and close now. And then let us now provide the relationship of the intra class with them. So let us now provide the intra class. Now go to the actions and then go to the manage intra class now. And then let us now populate the item. <coughs> so click on plus now. So P50. Fine. It is a capital D percentage 3. No? It's coming. Okay, then go there. Yeah. What happens if we have to put what P50 and then the destination which is grams now? Choose the grams over here now. Then grams. So it shows you two things. One is the quantity class as well as one is the weight class actually. Fine. I'm not choosing that weight class on this now. Fine. Go that. I will now say it's a 0.01. And the same relationship I'm entering it. Fine. Go that. Click on save and close by which what happens again over here. Now we come for the miscellaneous transaction now. Fine. Go that. The ultimate one. We are now seeing this. 3.3. Click on create miscellaneous transaction now. And then here, what happens? We go there, MI, and then give it tab now. And then here, what happens? We are not considered the intra class exceptions at all on this now. Fine. There may be intra class exceptions also. Fine. Intra class exceptions are not. And then go there. I've done a very simple one actually. And go there. Click on it. So click on plus now, and then I'll now populate the item over here. It's a P50, and then capital D, and then percentage 3. And drop down the sub inventory. <clears throat> and then here, I will now don't enter the quantities, go to the view details, and then do it. In this place, if I put the primary as 10, what happens? The secondary will not default at all. Now you have to mention, okay, I am not measuring it. And then this guy is now saying 1101. And then he is entering it. If it enters, if it shows the value, there is a possibility that he may even simulate it actually. So give it up. He is now giving error actually. It is not allowed. This transaction is not allowed. And then if you put what happens, uh, uh, 899, then also it will be error actually. The 10% of the bottom. If you put 901, what happens? Be there are reasoning. Fine. I have seen in the textile industry, what happens? They use a no default. The textile industry use a no default. Now it is not giving any problem at all. No default will not default anything. You only have to measure and then write it on the secondary quantity. You have to measure and then write it. And then click on OK and then submit it. This is also widely. Can we, uh, is it, can we not enter the secondary quantity? No. We, you, don't, you cannot do this now. I am not also very sure about it. Let us now see whether you cannot enter the second point. Let us see what happens now. This is not a mandatory field. No? I think it may even accept it. Probably. If you don't accept it, let us see what happens. Now. Click on OK now. I think it is accepting it. I think Probably it will not populate the values basically. If you are not accepting it. Yeah, the, uh, why I am asking is uh, the tracking is at both primary and secondary exactly, unit exactly. of measure. It is also not so, a, thought that it is a must. In this not. case, if, if we are not giving this uh, secondary quantity, then. Uh, yeah, good good, good observation of that because it is not a mandatory field. Good, good, right? So, secondary, if you are not putting it, if you put it, what happens? It will not check for the deviation. If you are not putting it, what happens? I thought that it will not accept, but it is accepting it. Whereas in EBIS, it is not so. In EBIS, what happens? Uh, both the fields will be mandatory fields actually. MOC. Or when you're transacting it, what happens? Uh, both the primary and secondary fields will be mandatory actually. So here it is not coming as a mandatory fine. They made a modified I think probably. So click on submit now. Okay. It's about thousand only. Click on submit now. Let's see the third item. Click on submit now. Let's see whether it comes or not. See, it's not allowing you. You must enter value for the secondary quantity. <laughs> so if the error should have come there itself, no fine. 
when i gave a okay to come now it is now coming it is not allowing me to yeah good yeah thanks <laughs> so click on this there itself what happens when i give a okay it has to go fine there is all some bugs basically so that is why i was thinking that in ebus what happens is a mandatory fill actually so go there and then if you put what happens uh, uh, 899 again what happens is not accepting it at all because there is no real validation and then if you put 901 or 904 what happens is no no so second record is a mandatory field they have to make it as a mandatory actually and there is a mistake some small bug here and there and click on submit now and go there <clears throat> and then what happens is the transaction is complete and go there and then query for the item now and go there click on it so you know see this <clears throat> i will not say p50 percentage 3 over there not working at all so p50 when click on search now somewhere there the percentage is working here it is not go there and then choose the powder 3 now and um3 um3 and now what happens it will be reporting this now this completes the units of measures now tell me how many of you are confident now can do it correctly thomas you can do it now you can open up your video and then speak also <laughs> tell me have you understood anita have you understood it yes sir very good fantastic beautiful fine she is really very good fine go there thomas might have understood arivu has already uh, what happens uh, transact or even even give some suggestions also fine he has definitely understood it so what about viru have you understood it It's a very complex topic actually. It's not an easy one. Yeah, we have used actually your unit in our previous project. Or that? We had an implementation actually for a Saudi project. So we have worked on dual uh, units of measurement. Very good, fantastic. Fine. So Anita has already worked on it, dual units of measures, and so what happens is she is very confident on this. Good, good. So Thomas has understood the chart. Fine. Anybody else? Viru. Fine. Madhu, have you understood it? Harish, have you understood it? Fine. If you can uh, take this, it will be, will be very happy actually. <laughs> Your teacher will be very happy if he is able to communicate things very properly to the students. No point, no right? <laughs> I'm really happy on this. That's it. Fine. Okay, fine. We'll not meet tomorrow. Then we'll not continue on this uh, inventory uh, implementation actually. <clears throat> so if there is no other doubts, we'll not call today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nana. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yep, thank you, Nana. Thank you.